like off topic, I mean, I know we've done a few interviews before, but it'd be good to kind of get to know you a little bit, if that's all right. Um, I'd like to know your story into boxing. Um, I'm Alciyas, the real name is Albert Kachaturov, in Russian it's Albert Kachaturov. Um, Whereabouts in Russia? From, oh, I'm originally from Kyrgyzstan. And um, my parents met there when they were in university. Uh, when I was born, maybe one and a half, maybe I was one and a half years of age, we went to Uzbekistan, to Andijan, which is, by the way, if you check that out, is a mecca of Uzbekistani boxing. All the greatest fighters for Chagayev, anyone, loads of world champions from there. You know what? I'm linking now. I'm in my, I just passed my mid 40s. Yeah? And I'm linking all my life. And I think boxing was installed there from the very beginning because I was a musician for 30 years gigging, performing, producing, traveling, and I never thought that I'll end up with boxing. I That's love quite it. a transition from Very music. similar two things, very similar. Boxers, same as musicians. Managers, same as music managers. Boxers and musicians, the same. They all think that they're better than they are. They need looking after, they can't even tie their, their own shoelaces, and that's what it is, exactly the same. Some talented fighters, some talented musicians, but the only difference between music and boxing, and that, that is the reason why I love boxing more, or sport more than, you can earn money in sport. If Usain Bolt is the fastest runner, you can't deny that, correct? But you can say that Oasis is shit, and Stevie Wonder is amazing. An Oasis fan will tell you that Stevie Wonder has shocking lyrics and he can't sing Stevie Wonder. And Oasis is the best rock man. You can have the arguments about stylistics. Rock people don't like funk and funk doesn't like rock. And the classical music and jazz people ignorant and they say that nothing but jazz. There's no music outside the jazz, yeah? In boxing, if Golovkin smashes people up and he knocks them out, you cannot deny. It's a fact. It's a fact. You cannot deny. That's why. Because it's factual, it's easy to make money, it's easy to survive, it's easy to sell the product. Because I can bring the most amazing band to the A&R man for audition and he's going to say, it's boring. Craig David was the most boring thing at the time, no one wanted to sign him. Before that selector came on. And that selector track came on and that's it. He was, everyone said, I knew he was talented. Do you know what I mean? In boxing, that's never going to happen. You either shine in the ring or no. Mm -hmm. And if you don't shine today, you shine tomorrow, you're going to get picked up, correct? Knockout or great performance and people will notice you. Music, completely different. Music is, it's an art. It's just like one man's meat, another man's poison. When boxing is a different thing. Boxing is a very specific sport. So I never knew I'll end up in boxing, but I'm really enjoying my life. It's very stressful. Uh, but we are victims of passion. We are victims of passion all. Well, what age did you get, in, get into boxing or, or start becoming a kind of manager, a promoter? Or... Uh, when, I turned my four, when I turned 40. I turned 40 and I thought I'm sitting in a recording studio and I'm working. I already started doing a little matching and um, circumstances around me were um, the force of nature had been taking me by a scruff of the neck and putting into boxing. I started to realize like probably inevitability I'll end up in boxing uh, one day. And I just look in the, as I sat in the studio with a beautiful Kadak mixing desk. Those who understand about gear, Kadak is the Don. Massive mixing desk and beautiful ATC speakers and mm. Macintosh and Pro Tools and Telepunk. Speak, speakers and, with the white. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. And it's, it's just a, like valve gear. I had all Yuri compressors and all this, all phenomenal gear. And I sat in the studio and I thought, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm 40 now. I'm bored. I'm never going to be a star. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm tired to produce, I'm tired to gig, and I'm tired. And I thought, you know, it's not happening for me. And my wife always said, it's really weird, you're a musician, but you always switch your radio or your stereo off in the car when you drive. You don't listen to the music. You know what I mean? Mm. Do you I, listen to like talk I don't, shows or something? I don't listen to anything. I like quiet, I like silence. I think silence keeps me sane. And I do find myself getting irritated when something's in the background. Like if I'm working, it needs to be quiet, clinical, like a monk. Library would be the best environment for me. But the arrogance of me saying it needs to be quiet by my horrible loud voice on the phone with a Russian accent. I have to be walking from one end to another and like speaking Russian, doing the deals, you know what I mean? So someone needs to tolerate me, but I can't handle when something's going on around me. It's crazy. Because tired. I'm a tired man. Mm. Were you in the uh, UK? Sorry. Sorry. 
Yeah, I wasn't. I, I am in the UK for the last 22 years. Yeah. Still have this crazy accent. Like someone, one of the interviews, one of the interviews. I don't remember who it was. Maybe Rob Tebbit or something. I read the comment and someone said, "What a wanker! Stop putting that shitty accent on." I'm telling you. <laughs> Genuinely, this is my accent. I can do better, but that will be much slower, and I need to articulate and stuff. It's been a long day. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no okay. problem. Yeah, so try to understand me. Okay, no problem. So yeah. Um, You've, you've managed and or I say promoted or matchmaked quite a lot of fights. Lots of you, fights, you, yeah. Uh, obviously, one name is it, uh, uh, Bradis. Bradis was um, my fighter for yeah. long. It was my fighter. It was my baby, my main project. And uh, I took him from number 65 mm. in box rec to number two in the WBC Cruiserweight World Champion, put him into the um, World Boxing Super Series. He was very close to me, and we were very close and very close with the team, and we had a great ride. Fantastic ride. Seeing the, the only Latvian make the world championships and becoming a world champion. It's like I said, one of the interviews I said the probability of Latvian becoming a world champion is like being beaten by a shark in the river Daugava, which is the Riga. Uh, the, it's like a Thames in London. This is the name That's of the right, river yeah. in, in Riga. Yeah. And there you go. That's what it was. Is, is that the highest profile fighter to date? Yes, so it is the highest profile fighter. I work behind the scenes with quite high profile yeah, fighters. Yeah, you camera um, about the... Yeah, you work with I work with... Uh, oh, yeah, I mean... Like a matchmaker role. I work with Matchroom because Paul Reddy being really kind and he values my expertise and he asks me time to time, which is every show, <laughs> pretty much, saying, Al, if there's anyone there. Um, Do you and get I'm, extra money for being an interpreter? <laughs> I'm trying. No, no, it's okay. I mean, I'm, they're, they're like family for me. It's a great family. We've been together four and a half years. I mean, they don't know about it, but I know. I saw the first date I brought the opponent. It was when Dennis Baktov fought Anthony Joshua, which is 2014. And it will be four and a half years, I think. Or in November, it will be five years. And uh, yeah, working a lot, doing lots of matching internationally. Uh, less of matching now. I do more promotions mm -hmm. now, trying to just work with Matchroom and do my own promotions. Promotions are very hard if you go, don't have any TV. Mm -hmm. I have some European television which I'm trying to utilize. Um, interesting. 24 7 box, no, 25 8 boxing, I'd say that. I mean, honestly, just like some sleep in between. And um, trying to give some family time when I can, but my family knows I'm a boxing freak, so. There's nothing in my life apart from boxing. I've got two children and a beautiful wife, but they just bury with me. The father just obsessed. Papa is crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, in regards to uh, how many, how many do you manage outside of, um, like, say, you, 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 you promote? Do you, do you still manage a lot? I, uh, I do advise. Place? Let me tell you this about management as well. I mean, obviously, I'm waiting for the UK manager's license, and I have my interview in October. Funny thing, because I thought I'm already eligible, and I paid my fees. And then Dennis calls me and says, Oh, too early, October 2019. I said, You're kidding? He goes, No. So I have to wait. But I do advise to loads of fighters, and I, uh, not co manage, but being a manager is a massive commitment because managers, oh, let's, let's, let's sign him up. You don't realize that you become liable for someone else's destiny. And if you're liable, I'm, that's, I'm a proud man. I need to deliver. If, if I'm taking, if I'm, um, can you say take hold of? No, you can't say. If I'm getting hold of, correct? Getting mm. hold of your career, mm. I have to deliver it for you. And if I can't deliver for you, you'll be telling your friends and other fighters, I see yes, the full of shit. He didn't deliver for me. I didn't have good fights. Uh, I wasn't looked after properly. Then my credibility is going to go down. So when I'm choosing the fighter to manage, mm. I'm very accurate who I'm going to be choosing. So th hence I chose an Icenia Bifold recently because I heard he's an absolute nightmare. But I like challenges. I want to see what this guy is about, and I think he can fight as well. Mm. He's shown in the fight against Chisman that he can fight. If he, if he probably, I think if he would have been prepared better and had a proper camp and would have advised better, he probably would have done mm. it on a different manner. But let's see that, let's see that. I think he wants to manage himself, but I'm always there to help. So he's fighting on the show tomorrow. So when you look for fighters, what are the main attributes that you look at? Uh, intellect. Intellect is the main attribute for me in the fighter. If, if you're stupid, you're never going to be a world champion. Trust me, I've never seen one. If you're stupid, you're never going to be a good fighter. You're never going to be ring crafty. You're never going to be ring wise. Never. If, 
If I would have been a um, conniving manager, I would be looking for the brawler who entertains and brings the crowds and um, name left the na uh, left my head completely. Arthur Rugati, but he wasn't a brawler. He was a brawler, but he was a good fighter as well. Do you know what I mean?